I, Kate Fisher, dream big. Like, really big. I cannot think inside of the box because I usually don't even recognize that there is a box at all. It is perhaps my greatest gift and probably my greatest struggle. Growing up, it led me into a series of bad decisions, each of which I have paid for tenfold. I simply could not function in the strict routine and schedule of high school. It felt unnecessary to follow so many rules and I loved to find ways to break them, usually flipping the middle finger to authority in the process. Now, I'm not excusing my shabby adolescent attitude, but as an adult, I can actually pinpoint most of why that attitude existed. First and foremost, high functioning anxiety. I didn't even realize I was battling mental illness until I was like 31 years old. I just assumed everyone felt like they were walking into a job interview 24 seven. Turns out that's actually not a thing for most people, but it has been a struggle of mine for most of my life. Trying to camouflage this vulnerability with an effort attitude created what I call a really twisted people pleasing hybrid. I was stuck between wanting to impress others and wanting to hurt them before they could hurt me. This truth carried through friendships, family, and in the classroom. I mean, let's be honest here. It is way more fun to want to please the type of friend that would sneak out at lunch to smoke cigarettes in the parking lot than it was to please the front office lady who was already skeptical of my pretty sketchy attendance record. Sorry, Miss Penny. My anxiety followed me to art school, where I continued to struggle to find myself. I again questioned, why do I have to be here during lectures on postmodernism or three hour long painting two classes? Truthfully, I had met my future husband when I was 21 years old. He was not an art student or student at all, he was a first year kindergarten physical education specialist, an athlete, a farm boy. And all I really wanted to do was spend every hour of every day with him. Was this a responsible behavior? No. Did I care? Nope. Did I graduate? Yep. Do I have regrets about how I spent my college years? Kinda but I am still head over heels in love with that farm boy teacher and we are happily married with three ridiculous children. Charlie, six, Loretta, almost four, and Elizabeth, Betty, Anne, who's one and a half. These tiny humans have challenged me in nearly every way possible. They have filled my soul with so much love that there is hardly any room in there for insecurities anymore. They have set up shop in my heart and provided me with a healthy dose of patience and humility on the daily. Do not misunderstand. I screw up a lot. We all do. That's the nature of human beings. But instead of covering up that shame with a screw it attitude, I now do my best to pray about it pretty much all day long. This challenge did not occur overnight, and it was not painless. It took years and years of hurt and loss for me to let go and realize that I do not have to do all of this by myself. And even though seeking the approval of cute boys with questionable character may have seemed like a good life choice in the early 2000s, I have finally figured out that God's approval is all that really matters. Sorry, not sorry. Right now, you're probably thinking, Kate, so you thought you were a pretty bamf teenager, uh, graduated college, married a teacher, and are trying to raise three rascals in a house full of love and God's grace. Cool. But what does this have to do with dreaming big and creating a children's book? You know what? That is such a legit question. I can't even be mad at you for asking. 
So here's my answer. This new life I live has become full of some of the most inspiring, compassionate, and brave people in the history of the world. They love me unconditionally, and I can feel that in the warmth of their hugs and the emojis of their messages. So when I told my entourage that I was going to become an author illustrator, they said, of course you are, and provided me with enough encouragement to last a lifetime. Many of these people have been the motivation behind the words of this book. Their courage during hard times, their endless prayers, and their childlike trust in God's plan. I'm talking about individuals like Erin Remy, a young mama of three that has stage four breast cancer. My dear aunt Sherry, who lost her husband two years ago and is the fiercest prayer warrior of all time. Kayla Strand, a beautiful young woman who founded a nonprofit in honor of her late husband. Melissa Dieger, an amazing wife and mother who is now up in heaven alongside her infant son. My best friend Kayla Axum, who lost her mama and watched her struggle with health issues for most of her life. These people, along with countless others, have been through tremendous heartache. I am not naive enough to think that my sweet little book could solve the world's problems or cover the intense pain these families face every day. But I can offer a piece of art that will provide warmth, love, and support. Sometimes as a friend, that's all we can do. I'm writing this post and recording this video as a personal invitation to follow me on my journey to bring this book to life. I strongly believe that what we do with our time, talent, and treasure matters. So I'm taking all of my anxiety and laying it at God's feet and trusting in His plan for me and putting this gentle and redeeming story into a picture book that will hopefully resonate with little listeners and adults alike. It is my genuine intention that my artwork inspires someone and fills them with hope. Even if just one mother reads it and thinks, yep, I can do this. I can face another day. Well then, I consider all of my efforts a huge success.